Hey there, it's Rich McLean, an infamous vagrant and um, victim of a conspiracy by the government to kill me. They did, they covered it up, and they're trying again. Um, I need your help, Australia, and to get out of a shit situation, um, I'm going to need some help and some assistance from the government. And additionally, um, you can check out killing.info because I'm going to turn a shit situation into a really good thing for a lot of people. Please hear me out. Thanks. Hi everyone, it's Dr. Rich McLean. I'm a uh, infamous vagrant and a homeless person and I'm in desperate help. I have um, been semi-famed for my role as a um, autobiographer um, for my um, autobiography, Recover Not Killed A Journey Through Schizophrenia. And um, that was about when I identified with that um, that label um, back in the early 2000s, for which I lost my job, but we'll go into the systemic oppression soon. Um, I have one shot at this because I presently have um, no money. I have um, no medication. I'm squatting. I have a lease, but um, I'm squatting. There is also a dead cat underneath my bedroom floor, which is really bad. Look, um, I want to say a few different things. This is for the purposes of the CDD scheme in government compensation for loss from detriment caused by agencies and um, systemic organisations from which I have been persecuted for years. I've been character assassinated and I have been scapegoated. I have been destroyed to the point of death. That's right. I killed myself within a hospital um, it was deemed fatal and a lethal injury and since then I have had um, an abhorrent amount of victimization. How do I turn this situation into something good? This is how I'm going to do it. First of all, we have to prove that there's some defective administration. Examples of dis defective administration include um, the agency um, didn't comply with existing administrative procedures or they um, they failed to institute appropriate administrative procedures or they failed to give proper advice that was within their power to give. All these have failed me um, uh, or they've failed to give proper advice that they were reasonably capable of t obtaining or in the circumstances incorrect or ambiguous. Um, detriment is can be um, including to a personal injury, including mental injury. I have a mental injury. In the whole year since I suffered a fatal fatality, which was I call myself post death, I was um, rejected to job seeker, and um, I haven't seen one psychologist or neurologist in that whole time. I cannot feel my feet. I cannot think. It's very difficult for me. I need desperate help. Um, uh, there can be also economic detriment that is not related to a person's injury, pure economic loss. I am worth millions upon millions of dollars. 
I have been systemically oppressed through government agencies and framed through powerful um, forces um, that want to kill me. And it is clear that after my death, that is exactly what they want to do. I'm not expecting the government to admit liability, but I'm expecting that we will reach a conciliation and I've put the deadline down for the um, <coughs> 11th, uh, 17th of March or 18th of March next week. I will need to provide, to prove this, um, a calculation of the amount I'm claiming. I will reach a conciliation. Um, uh, oh, my, my, my initial um, um, asking is that I be paid immediately a monthly bursary until it can take years to work out these things. Um, the government or the agencies um, calculate how much they're going to pay me. That will, I think, be a lot. Um, I don't need a lot. What I'm going to do, I just want to live a basic life free from oppression. I had death threats two nights ago. The police will not do anything about it from my former partner. And um, an, an explanation of, I've got to explain how the amount was calculated and the steps I've taken to minimize the container the loss. Now I have fought for my whole life in an uphill battle with stigma, shame that wasn't mine, oppression, prejudice, and discrimination. I've been victimized, vilified, scapegoated, and character assassinated on a catastrophic scale. Um, um, this CDDA scheme is established under executive power from section 61 of the constitution. Portfolio ministers have responsibility for decisions. Um, so I'm making an application for CDDA and I am going to regain some of my human dignity and I have worth as not only a sentient being, but as a person who has spoken from parliament to Dubbo, to Montreal, Japan, and all this hundreds of speeches helping other people. Um, I, 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 I require that this video evidence be taken as my immediate um, application because I have no time. I have no concentration. I find it difficult. My internet connection is just going to go and then I will be an official vagrant. Um, I'm not allowing that to happen, hence this video. And I'm allowed under the Human Rights Act to express myself in any way I please. A public authority under the Charter of Human Rights and Responsibilities Act um, says that a public authority um, or a public official under the Public Administration Act 2004 um, has to abide by human rights um, legislation that is enshrined in this Commonwealth including the head of a government department or an administrative office. Um, I deserve recognition and equality before the law. I have never had an unbiased lawyer or one who wasn't cooked against me. I have cases at the AAT. I've had cases at... Um, <sighs> there's so many, I could list them in a minute. Um, I have the recognition... I have the, uh, the right to recognition as a person before the law. I have the right to enjoy my human rights without discrimination, which is easily proved that that has not happened. Every person is equal before the law and is entitled to the equal protection of the law without discrimination and has the right to equal and effective protection against discrimination. I have been discriminated against, gaslighted, pushed to the next stage, ostracized, ignored and set up to fail again and again and again. It has ended in my catastrophic um, situation at Werribee Mercy Hospital a whole year, uh, over a year ago in February 2021. I have the right to life and have the right not to be arbitrary deprived of life. I have died. I can't believe I'm saying this. Um, it's true. I suffered a fatal injury. I was found accidentally with no pulse unresponsive. It's the Hospital Freedom Information says it was a fatal injury and it was um, uh, a, a, a lethal attempt. This is because of systemic government injustice and catastrophic framing of me that rendered me a, um, an inpatient in a psychiatric unit in which I'd proved beyond reasonable doubt 
that no person cared for me or would not stand up for me. That is still the case. I have very few supporters, but I'm asking the people of Australia as a um, person who has advocated for mental health advocacy and recovery for so many years, um, 25 plus years actually, and you may have seen me um, do a speech near you or I may have um, been to a speech near you. Um, I ask those people to support me in the meantime until the government can decide uh, determination and or um, a monthly above average wage just to see me through and to give my life back some meaning and dignity and um, honour my human rights and my rights under the Charter of People with a Disability, which say I should have a home, I should have water, medication, care, equality before the law. I, under the, under the, um, I just want to say under the Human Rights, a Charter of Human Rights and Responsibilities Act, I have the right to my privacy. Um, I have the, and I've had death threats only a couple of nights ago at the door and a couple of months ago. I deserve my correspondence not be arbitrary or unlawfully interfered with, interfered with. That has not happened. My website, richmcclean.com, was heinously desecrated and destroyed. And I also have the right not to have my reputation unlawfully attacked. I have been attacked not just by one person, although there are a few key players, but systemically across this government. And that is why I'm going for compensation for the CDD scheme, because it is the heads of government departments that will have to um, not tow the party line anymore. You don't have to do a bit more responsibility. You killed me, but you're trying to kill me as we speak. Now, I have freedom of expression. Every person has the right to hold an opinion. This is mine without interference. That is mine, that you're trying to kill me and you're still doing it. Even after my death, you really kicked it in. Every person has the right to freedom of expression, which includes the freedom to seek, receive and impart information and ideas of all kinds inside or outside of the country. Now, this can be orally, in writing, print, art or in another medium. Um, I have chosen this medium to, um, to um, express myself. And I also have property rights. A person must not be deprived of his or her property other than in accordance with the law. This has clearly not happened and um, it is an abhorrent victimisation that I have been robbed again and again and again, let down, set up to fail again over and over, which you will find out in this video. I'm going to give that back to this pe the people of Australia and the marginalised and the people I've stood up for and my people, the colourful people, the people that bring the light, the people that um, will um, challenge the others um, to expand their human horizons and their consciousness. And there is an obligation on public authorities, which has not occurred, um, Section 38, Conduct of Public Authorities, which includes people in systemic government organisations, one, subject to this section, it is unlawful for a public authority to act in a way which is incompatible with a human right or in making a decision to fail to give proper reconsideration to a relevant human right. Mine have been utterly desecrated. I have been framed and I have been absolutely set up to fail. Again and again. Um, now... The Declaration of Human Rights of Disabled Persons. Now, you could argue a disability is also an ability. Um, I wouldn't have been able to express all the art I have in my time if I wasn't a person who exists um, experiencing the broad nature of um, my perceptions. I have the, Section 10. I have the right to protect, protection against exploitation, discrimination and abuse. Clearly that hasn't happened. Freedom from exploitation, violence and, ab and abuse. I have been exploited. I have been demonised. I've been um, victimised, vilified and character assassinated. Now human rights are a fundamental right and a freedom that is intrinsic to every person by virtue of their status as a human being. I want mine met, please. The Disability Discrimination Act has um, also other provisions in terms of accommodation and um, access to law and all that kind of stuff, including equal recognition before the law and access to justice. 
I have a um, just one of the million dollar cases that's going on with the AAT at the moment. That the government, having already killed me, now have a thirty year experienced lawyer to um, kick the can down the road and bury me at um, the thing when I can't even understand why they're rejecting me. This is unholy amount of discrimination and those people should know better. I'm holding them to account right now. Kate Wilson and the AAT, you're under my watch. I know I'm under investigation, but you are under my investigation. And in the Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities, access to housing is a fundamental need and a core element of a human right to an adequate standard of living in. I am squatting. I have suffered the injustice of being ground to the ground so much through government agencies that I have been reduced to squatting. They say 30% of rent stress is um, can affect your mental health. Hello, what's it like when people at the whole government's trying to kill you and you've been character assassinated? And by nature of exploiting the already existing prejudices in society, your friends and family are against you as well. Now, what actions... This is very important. Perverting the course of justice. I've always said this is a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. A person can be charged with the offence based on... Um, um, what, or what, what must be proven, sorry, to go there. So my mind's... Be, um, fractured because of the injury. Now I can prove a person guilty of perverting the course of justice because the prosecution must prove each of the following matters beyond a reasonable doubt. That the accused did or an act or made an omission. An omission is just not doing something. Like for example the AAT and Kate Wilson. They absolutely know that I have um, equal rights before the laws of a person with a disability. However, they um, made an omission that um, this has occurred and that they did so to intent to pervert the course of justice. This is an unholy amount of victimization and vilification. Um, um, I just want to say too, a little note about perjury. Um, it's, it's 3271 of the Crimes Act, which states any person who in connection with any judicial proceedings makes any false statement on oath concerning any matter which is material to the proceedings, knowing the statement to be false or believing not to be true, is guilty of perjury. I reckon I could put this whole government in, in jail. What actions might constitute perjury? Lying in court, um, false alibis or a sworn affidavit, um, you know. The police must prove for this um, that you make a false statement under oath or reformation. There is clear evidence, of course, that there's a perverse systemic um, um, perversion of the course of justice. Um, it's concerning any matter that is relevant to a proceeding or knowing the statement to be false or not believing it to be true. Um, my basic needs need to be met of social protection. Rosemary KS supported this advocating for the Charter of Human Rights and People with Disability and it's enshrined into the legislation of this country. It is enshrined in the legislation and foundations of this country in Australia is a signature too. Um, now, <coughs> I just want to go on about the NDIS, the NDIS Act. I'm going to start to um, frame this through actually um, the law because I have been a victim of this government, systemically oppressed and, neglect and neglected and ostracised, my evidence silenced, I've tried to be a whistleblower, I'm a banned whistleblower, I can't go to the police, I can't get a lawyer, I can't go to IVAC, I can't go to ASIC, I can't go to AFSA, I, AFCA have ripped me off, I can't go to the Australian Human Rights Commission, they've ripped me off, I can't go to um, the, the, the Ombudsman, they won't listen to me, I'm catastrophically denied, I'm, I, I, I know there is a plan to put me in hospital and incarcerate me, a ward of the state. I am not insane. I am clever, but I have been oppressed and you are trying to exploit the idea that it is a paranoid thing when in actual fact, it goes right back to the early days of my um, human rights award winning, um, you know, pro-feminist book in which 
educates people like on regretful sex and drugs and that kind of stuff. And then my former partner, an ASIO agent who owes me half a million dollars. Now I'm going to wrap up now with that little bit of a speech and um, I'm going to proceed with um, why this abhorrent and ungodly amount of oppression from this government should fall on the hands of one pretty good dude. I've got a nice dog, you know, I've got a nice house. How do I turn this bad situation into good? This is how I'm going to do it. I'm doing a vi this video and then I'm asking for conciliation, a month's wage paid until you can sort out. And I don't want you to admit you lie, well, even though it's clear, um, but I require compensation for all the detriment that I have lost over the years. And I'll go into them one by one in this video. Thank you. G'day, it's Dr. Richard McLean, and this is a message for the Prime Minister and Cabinet, the Federal Finance Minister Birmingham, um, Michaelia Cash, the Attorney General, and every other agency that has um, caused me major financial and um, emotional and health detriment. Um, my name is Dr. Richard McLean. This is my video statement because it is under the, um, I think it's the Human Rights um, Charter that I'm allowed to express myself in any way. This video log is going out to the public and it's going to um, all of you for an Im immediate resolution. Uh, the date is, the date is Wednesday the 9th of March and I would like a resolution before the end of the week. First of all, I'm going to introduce how I've acted with love and compassion my whole life and been taken advantage of. And I've done all that love and compassion through um, for nothing, no money, really. Um, and now um, the government having no love and compassion owes me lots of money. Therefore, out of the detriment that I can easily prove, and I will prove it, and you'll have to acknowledge it, 
Otherwise, I will take you to the Federal Circuit Court or indeed take on the government myself um, from the street corner because I'm squatting and I'm a multi-millionaire on paper. This is my story. It's Rich McLean. And um, first, I'm going to tell you where all this money's going. I'm going to dedicate, um, uh, first of all, I think the outcome is important to um, uh, arrive at at the start. What I'm asking is that these investigations can go for years. I have enough unequivocal evidence that is easily provable that um, uh, is on my website, killim.info. How do I know you're going to kill me? Because you killed me anyway. That's right, I suffered a fatal suicide injury in um, Werribee Mercy Hospital. I was accidentally found and revived. And, um, and that's when things really started to get bad for me after years of systemic government oppression and corruption and errors and um, just plain catastrophic um, character assassination that has led me to the loss of billions of dollars, my health and um, my very human worth. And I'm going to give the money back. Oh, first of all, I want, by the end of the week, I want a um, above average wage paid to me as a monthly bursary until you can sort out the detriment. If this isn't arrived at, um, and you kick the can down the road as the delay, defer, deny model that the government is famous for, um, I will be still pursuing this and I will take the government to the um, to some kind of court myself individually with the help of some compassionate person out there who sees my case as valid and, um, and I will do it myself and hold your talk out that way. So um, it's not a threat, it's the only option I have. Um, I hope for compassion and I hope the government does show me compassion and grants me a month's wage until you sort out what you owe me from detriment. I wanna go on now about where that money, the millions of dollars is going. For me, it's never been about money. It's been about expanding knowledge, experience, um, about having um, pushing the, the boundaries of what's possible and um, about sharing stories so that no other person suffers. As a human rights awarded artist, author and advocate, Science Book of the Year and a PhD, a doctorate, I, um, I will um, pledge to give um, out of the balance um, of these many millions of dollars um, I'm going to say 20, 20% to um, um, child sexual abuse and um, prevention and education because education is the heart of everything. That's where 20% is going. Um, I'll have a think about where the other's going, but I'm going to give away two, four, six, um, 60 four, six, 60% of it, and um, I'm going to choose the other two charities. Um, and they're going to be ones that the government supports anyway. And additionally, um, I have never needed much to survive on. I live a simple life. I had a death threat last night and the police won't intervene from my former partner 
his, his cronies, um, the uh, narcissistic monkeys flying around, and the police won't do anything about it. Um, indeed, there are lots of inconsistencies in the way that this government is trying to kill me, and um, I fear for my life, and I was so afraid last night I had a bit of an overdose, so it's not a good story. I, um, I wish for this to come to a fast conclusion, and I pledge to give 60% of all that money to charity, um, especially um, people, children and colour and um, and intersex and different sexuality people. They're the, um, they're the agents of change for a world that needs um, the Christian model of, it's only my opinion, of um, man, woman and child to be absolutely shattered before um, Christianity came along in America, for example, the uh, and Native Americans there had um, five or six different gendered people. There are different gendered people in the world. I'm a cisgendered um, bisexual man, but um, it, it means that um, that I'm going to um, advocate for truth and research and science. And as science shows, um, we are a polyamorous species. So regardless of what you think of my opinion, I'm going to help the people that are marginalized and framed and left on the outer by any systemic movement that is oppressive and is um, has fascism and all that. So it's not enough to be just um, neutrally not fascist. You have to be anti-fascist. And that includes um, organised religion. And um, that's where the charity will go. As a person with an acquired brain injury, um, which the government knew about after my suicide, yet um, put me onto Centrelink as a job seeker, even though I was on leave already from two failed VOCAT cases in which I was innocent and would have received compensation. However, um, at that time I realized I was framed and categorically um, um, systemically oppressed. This had been going on for years because of a complaint I made about a GP.
it was a valid complaint. I didn't do anything wrong and I hope I haven't done anything wrong, but the game of delay, defer and deny is over. I need an instant um, result because I haven't got time to delay, defer, deny. Um, I ha at the current situation, I am squatting. I have no medication. I barely have food. My family have all abandoned me. Society has abandoned me. But you know what? I love who I am. I love what I stand for. And I matter. And this government had better stand up, wake up, and pay attention because I'm bringing it to it to a, a, a head and I'm going to explain point by point in this video how the detriment has occurred. Thanks. The most pressing issue is that I have lost um, money at the Australian Human Rights Commission. They free kicked a one to two million dollar TPD case to the opposition, which I really could have used as a marginalised person with a very forgetful brain and who rambles a lot. That's because I lost all the blood in my body in the suicide attempt that was the result of systemic oppression. Now, I don't want you to admit that you killed me, but you absolutely played a role, this government and the oppressive forces that led me there to um, aid and abet my death. And then I died. I was accidentally found and filled up with blood, promptly kicked out of hospital and um, absolutely forgotten. It's not on. Um, I've been a public speaker and advocate in this country for 25 years. I've been a public illustrator at the Herald Sun and The Age. I've got a PhD, a master's degree in education, and I have contributed to the fabric and the culture of this society in Australia, from um, Parliament House in Canberra, to, um, to Warnable, to Dubbo, to the Today Show, to all the TV and radio stations, the drug debate, to um, having a first person narrative read on um, ABC National that I read out, to thousands of interviews, keynote speeches, a film made on my life by the DAC Centre, and um, even overseas to Montreal and to Japan. So um, I'm obviously a person of worth and value. And unfortunately for me, um, I did it out of love and compassion to stop the suffering of other people in great passion. Um, as we know, people of great passion often don't, sometimes don't make it through life. They die early. I did. And that's when things got bad. Now, I lost a, a, um, one to two million dollars at the Australian Human, uh, Human Rights Centre because Liz Lindbergh or the powers that be um, free kicked it to the other team. That's one. Now at AFCA, they did the delay, defer, deny model. It occurred to me that they're supposed to, um, um, if someone's under financial di distress, they're supposed to um, um, pay that out within four weeks or make a determination. Mine went for over two years before my hospitalisation and after my hospitalisation and suicide. Um, they absolutely knew, along with HCF, my insurer with income protection, that um, I was in great financial distress and um, they continued to delay, defer, and then um, um, who was it? Tim Goss and Peter Fisher from AFCA um, blackmailed me that I was being conspiratorial and that if I named them, they would drop my cases and they got an, they asked me to never contact them again or they'll drop them all. This was highly distressing for me as I was squatting, I was on job seeker and I should have been on a disability pension. Uh, apart from that, I should have um, already received $500,000 from my former partner, Steve Isodides, a former ASIO agent. And um, um, he was um, a terrible person who has a lot of criminality. I've been death threatened by him and his flying monkeys outside my house. And um, I believe it stems from there as well as the, um, the GP issue, this persecution and my public profile as someone who's not heteronormative and someone who's used drugs in the past and someone um, who apparently has a mental illness. But now I've got a um, acquired brain disorder. I know that because I'm the brain that it is and I remember I, things from 20 years ago and I can't remember things from yesterday. 
Now, this is consistent with research that says um, that I have um, suffered um, short-term memory loss as a result of toxins in the hippocampus and carbon dioxide buildup from losing all my blood. I'm not an idiot, I'm clever, but I'm very forgetful. Um, this is detriment. This systemic oppression that went for years um, caused me detriment. Now, um, Australian, Australian Financial Complaints Authority, also, um, I've lost over one to two, maybe over $2 million at, the, at AFCA. They just dropped them because I got fed up and named them. And uh, I, uh, they were supposed to come up with a solution within four weeks. I went to the oversight, um, ASIC or AFSA, I think it is, and they said they have no oversight of them. Who does have oversight is Michaelia Cash, the Attorney General. Um, she also oversees Comcare and they rejected my work cover claim, a valid claim where I was a registered therapeutic support for the NDIS. I was doing my work with a person who was um, had a victim of child rape and incest and um, he was hugely affected, of course, profoundly by these things. And um, he was a lovely bloke. I was helping him with his vocat case at the same time fighting for three years my own sexual abuse vocat case, um, uh, which I wrote about in my PhD, which no one believed or validated. I wanted it to be legend and valued somewhere, um, so I wasn't going batshit crazy. And the magistrate told me I was doomed to fail from the start. Colourful language for a sexual abuse survivor. That's because I was framed as an extortionist by um, a, a GP and... Um, his lawyer um, as an extortionist because I happened to have an innocuous recording of um, the incident of malpractice and negligence. Now, I have nothing against that doctor. We all have bad days, but you have a responsibility of care, wasn't held to, and um, the following organisations covered that up. That was um, the Health Complaints Commissioner, um, the Mental Health Complaints Commissioner, and APRA, and NHPAPC, and the police, and the local police, and the federal police, and IVAC, and the Victorian Inspectorate, uh, SANES Australia's uh, CEO, Jack Heath, they all towed the party line to silence that evidence before a court. I could not get legal help anywhere, and it has occurred to me at this date that I am systemically gaslighted, ostracised, neglected, and scapegoated. I've been character assassinated, and this is the reason why um, all these people have acted against me and how one single person has been heinously and ungodly victimised to the point of death and beyond, and then it got bad. So I've pointed out to the Attorney General that I have lost money at the Australian Human Rights Centre um, Commission. Um, that's you know, over a million, a million and a half uh, at AFCA. I've just lost that. And that was predictable. I predicted I'd lose that. And it did. I'd lost over one to two and plus million dollars. Um, at, um, there was not Comcare. Comcare rejected my claim. Paul Fowler, the head at WorkCover, uh, the head at uh, Comcare, he rejected my claim. And um, all the people that came before that well knew who I was up ahead. And I've got all the recordings um, that detail how they kicked the can down the road, delayed, deferred and denied it until I was desperate and the method methodology to defer everything so long that I kill myself before justice. Well, I'm alive. And um, uh, he rejected me, but work cover wouldn't help me. So, um, and then it turns out that um, Paul Fowler was the old boss and a lawyer at work cover. Gee, isn't that a coincidence? That smells like corruption to me. And also under the Attorney General's portfolio is the AAT. I've been fighting with Comcare and the AAT for nearly for over a year, and now it's going to a hearing. I've already predicted that because Michaelia Cash has been um, pointedly pointed out that there's corruption in all these agencies, and including under them AFSA and APRA as well, where I'm a failed whistleblower, and also the Commonwealth Ombudsman, 
where I'm a failed whistleblower. I have no power, no voice, and I am character assassinated. And all of these things under the portfolio of Michaelia Cash are um, the Attorney General. And I pointed out this to her, and I also pointed out that I need intervention in the AAT case because they are going to bury me. And I mean bury. They already uh, have the Comcare, a um, government appointed lawyer of 25 to 30 years experience. And she is defending the government over a now TPD claim with um, work cover at the AAT. I have expressed my um, non-participation um, in going forward until I have an advocate. But however, I have been absolutely banned from any legal help whatsoever. I've been banned from going to police. I can't go to any police. All the police want to do is lock me up and call me mad. This systemic oppression has driven me a bit mad to the point of suicide. It's very sad. More malpractice happened there. Now, on that, uh, oh, so, sorry, the AAT. So the AAT um, uh, is under Michaela Castro. She knows of all this um, corruption and um, Minister Birmingham does too. Hi, Minister Birmingham. And the, the Officer of the Prime Minister and Cabinet know who I am too. Hello, Officer of Prime Minister Cabinet. Have you covered, recovered from COVID, mate? Anyway, um, I pointedly said I need intervention before I lose my case because I'm character assassinated and I've lost all the money at all the other agencies and a failed whistleblower. This is despite me being an official um, government worker and I have um, a login at the social services website and I use Proda and all that kind of stuff. And um, I'm going to fail. Um, I know I'm going to fail because I've already pointed it out and she sent me to the same helpline. Why? Because no one sees justice. They see a distressed person, which is true, but they also only prejudice and stigmatise what they see as an already existing illness. When in actual fact, it's systemic government oppression that has led me to this point of desperation and squatting and without medication, without food, without care, and there is a dead cat under my computer and I can barely even afford an internet connection. Um, there's something else I'm going to say. What? I forget. I'll go on in a minute. But, um, yeah, there's corruption and, um, I'm going to lose this, um, uh, total permanent disability payout with the AAT because, um, uh, she already knows about it. Like they already know. They're rushing it through now. They do it at their own pace to delay and deny. But when I get close, they want to rush it through straight away. I'm going to win that and I'm going to give the money to charity. In regards to the suicide at um, um, Werribee Mercy Hospital in February 2021, the hospital records say it was a fatal injury and a lethal attempt. You would think I would be able to find a lawyer um, to, um, to, to, to atone this case, but I was victim blamed and more shame placed on me for wanting to die, for proving unequivocally that there was no one who had my back and my own blood family are the ones that put me in there. They would not see my justice issues and they only saw a mental illness. I am not a mental illness. I'm a sentient being who has acted with compassion and love his whole life for nothing. Now, the tide's changing. Um, I couldn't get a lawyer, I couldn't go to police, I couldn't go anywhere. All of that information is recorded on killing.info because that's what you're trying to do, kill me. The long game. Well, I'm playing the short game now. Um, so I couldn't get a lawyer and I actually offered the hospital CEO, Dave Stevenson, a, um, the opportunity for an atonement an acknowledgement that it happened. And that's all I've ever done with my justice issues. I've offered the other party a chance at acknowledgement of not admitting you're wrong, but just an acknowledgement. Everyone has absolutely categorically denied that. 
And he said, well knowing that I had spent months fighting at the Health Complaints Commissioner, at the Mental Health Complaints Commissioner, hello Alex Tinter, who is a corrupt lawyer, I mean they're all corrupt, Sen um, Senator Jennings, Commissioner Jennings, they're all at the top, you can't kill yourself in a hospital, it's an abandonment of duty of care. I was given more shame for that and I'm hated for it. If only you knew what I had to put up with. Well, I think some people do know, but to the average person, it seems so un unworldly, un un unfathomable that they can't understand it and they think I'm mad. Well, um, this is the exact way this movement exploits me because I've already publicly proclaimed in a human rights award-winning book, my vulnerabilities in a very brave and courageous way. I am brave and courageous and every government pawn that has been paid by the government to toe the party line and be another stick in the massive faggot of people that have tried to kill me are actually cowards. They are complicit and comfortable in their uh, wealth and I suffer at the hands of the government, unable to move forward and I have an uphill battle my whole life. Um, um, the CEO, Dave Stevenson, told me to sue him directly and personally, and he well knew that Ben Ombudsman, the Ben Ben Calder, the Ombudsman, had condoned my suicide in a hospital. That was fatal. That um, that um, there's nothing to see here. Move along, and that was another way to delay, defer, and deny my justice, and to heinously ruin me in all ways. I'd been set up to fail again and again and again. I refuse to be set up to fail again. I'm blowing the whistle. And further to that, I just want to say that um, he told me to swim directly, knowing full well that um, I had failed and will fail at every bit of justice. And I reckon it's a million dollar case. They're dying in a hospital with abandonment of duty of care with an agreed illegal contraband. They are complicit and guilty. And further to that, they misdiagnosed me. I explained to them under great duress um, when the CAT team came that um, there's a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. And it started here and here and here and my former partner and these other agencies. And they locked me up and they treated me with such contempt, especially Dr. Kumar, who who had known me 13 years prior. He was the head at Wherry Messi Hospital or one of them. and they well knew of all the um, poisonous part of the relationship that I had with a former partner and that he owes me a whole lot of money. Now, they absolutely knew full well that I wasn't psychotic, but the CAT team and everyone persecuted me and prejudiced me um, for, um, for being ill when it actually wasn't. And when I left that hospital after the suicide attempt, um, the... Um, psychiatrist on duty had to agree that I was neither psychotic nor delusional and in fact I was grossly aware. Only for the purposes of actually being in the hospital did they call it adjustment disorder which is a fancy way of saying um, that it was stress related to actual incidents and uh, that's the story there. So um, you can see um, this systemic oppression, which goes right to the top, has heinously and ungodly victimised one person, that's me, and that corruption has gone right to the top. I'm not asking you to admit the corruption, although it's very clear. I'm asking you to, at least for the moment, while you sort it out and while you sort out the evidence that's on killing.info, my website and whistleblowing website, because I'm a failed whistleblower, at APRA, at ASIC, at the Commonwealth Ombudsman, and anywhere else, and that there were death threats last night from I don't know who, someone, saying they're going to effing slit my throat and everything. I was so scared. I'm sitting here squatting. I'm extremely vulnerable. I've got no medication. I'm trying to hold it together. I've barely got food. My parents send me sometimes wheat bix and orange juice. And I owe some very generous people thousands of dollars. In addition to this, the NDIA minister, Reynolds, I have contacted personally and pointed out to her that I am a vagrant, I'm squatting, 
I'm an infamous vagrant and I deserve my last 42 invoices to be paid. Now there's this organization called Plan Partners, which is my NDIS planner. They said the NDIA or S has blanket um, assassinated all of my um, payments and the NDIA says it's Plan Partners. Now, whatever it is, I'd received some emergency accommodation before, but the closer I got to um, victory and blowing this wide open, the more I was oppressed and 42 invoices over nearly four months were um, rejected, which has led me to abject poverty where I don't have my human dignity valued. I don't have my human rights valued. I barely have a GP. And since the um, fatal suicide, I have neither seen a neurologist nor one psychologist in the last um, nearly whole year. That is more than a bad public mental health system. That is a way to play the long game to aid and abet my death by proxy attack of um, government agencies. And it is systemic. And the people that are supposed to care for me are cowards. And the people that are supposed as public officials in places of public office, supposed to um, atone and obey the Charter for Human Rights and the agreement the government signed into law, uh, which was the human rights of people with a disability. That means that we are supposed to have access to housing, clean water, food. It means that um, we have equity and equality before the law. It means we have access to the law. And I am one of those people None of those things has happened to me and I'm in a dire situation, which is why I'm playing the very short game and not the long game. The people of Australia, if the government doesn't come through to this, and you can help me anyway, because I'll pay you back. Um, you can donate on um, killim.info. I've set it all up. I'm good at designing web pages and doing other things. And I've advocated for tens, hundreds of thousands of people before in my time probably saved lots of lives. And um, I don't think I've done anything wrong. There are obviously ways that the government has framed me um, and, and, and I've already been threatened to be made an award of the state by Dr. Johan, which was on um, killing.info for the last time I was hospitalized by my very loving family and who've now abandoned me and always did and used um, the methodology of putting me in hospital as punishment because I have upset their, um, their dysfunctional family system and um, the fact that they are, <coughs> that I have, um, I've kind of um, embarrassed them, I've shamed them, but it's not my shame to have because I mean, after um, a couple of days after my suicide, my sexual abuser, one of them died and they all went to his funeral. Now they have catastrophically denied me any justice, any help. They are prejudiced against me because of different life choices and they're dead to me. Um, that's not how you treat blood. Um, the, the real supporters of me are the people who've donated 20 bucks, 50 bucks, enough to get medication. That's the situation I'm in. Um, I'm especially grateful to those people and those people are going to absolutely get what they deserve um, from me and, and they're going to know that um, the, the suffering that I've gone through as a transitional expert, I'm transforming that into um, what I've always tried to do, which is the lessening of suffering for other people. I've suffered enough. And um, this is going to be all changed in a positive way. And um, I've done this my whole life without money. And I hope that will change. And I think the tide is changing. I think it's come to the ignition point. I need to blow the whistle before I lose at AAT, before I can't appeal my decision for, for APRA and ASIC and, and the whistleblower status. And I lose my income assist from HCF, Sheena Jack, g'day. 
she's also she also knows about it they've categorically um denied and blacklisted me and um they owe me seventy five thousand dollars it's been a year i'm still paying the excess get that so this is how detriment has caused me great loss it has caused untold suffering on myself i understand that's not a um example of how you can be remunerated but i understand that if um, detriment has been lost as a and then again i'm not asking you to admit it but it's clear a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice or a heinous um, victimization of one person also against the law which is perjury as well um, then um, that is why i need an instant conciliation by the end of the week um, all I'm asking for is an above average wage so I can finally be comfortable, get into a place where I can have, and I also demand whistleblower protection in which I can live in peace with my dog. There she's Crystal, Crystal. And, um, and be free from threats, um, from hit men, whether they be government sent or, um, underworld. Um, that is the bulk of my statement. I'll go on, but, um, yeah, people of Australia, if you believe in advocacy and you've either heard me speak on my recovery models or for caring for people or for speaking in Parliament or for advocating in thousands of talks, you can go to um, um, killim.info, which is really what the government's done and what is evident that they were trying to do all along because after I died, I got utterly gaslighted, rejected, ostracised and catastrophically um, more shamed, which isn't my shame to have, it's yours. It's your shame that you did this to me. I didn't create it. It was dealt to me systemically, by proxy, silently, and by many pawns that are paid by the government to tow the party line to destroy me. I'm over it, I'm a whistleblower. My name's Rich McLean. Please go to killim.info. I've recorded all the information. It's now funny because the government's trying to sue me to, uh, for, for sticking up for myself. The only thing I had in my defense was to record all this and my computer's hacked. I have, you know, the human rights are I have freedom of um, peaceful, quiet life and that I, my communications won't be interfered with. My computer's hacked. Oh, and there's another one, Micron 21. So they're um, associated with the government. All the evidence I had for the hospital was on my email servers and with that notice they went in to my computer a few days before and they deleted everything and then I got an email saying you have now been deleted you're no longer a customer because you didn't pay the bill and you're being conspiratorial I was that's because there is one and they deleted all my websites and my backups and um, all the information and even the pictures of loved ones, my dear friend Nathan Turnley, who I was intensely grieved about when my first suicide attempt happened with the doctor he knew about, and he gave me the drugs to do it, and everyone covered it up. Um, now, uh, I won't go on too much further. Suffice to say that I've lived a passionate life of love um, and learning and um, expanding human knowledge and compassion and altruism. I've done it on a shoestring budget and I've been taken advantage of the whole time. The time has come for Dr. Richard McLean to stand up again and go to the big guns. That is you guys, um, Prime Minister, Prime Minister uh, MP Simon Birmingham, the President, I mean, the President, the um, Prime Minister Scott Morrison and um, the Attorney General. Again, you don't have to admit you're wrong. All you have to do is pay me a month's above average wage for a single person living in Melbourne so I can be free from oppression. And while you work out the detriment that you owe me, which could take years, I will expect that that monthly reimbursement will be paid. Until then, I ask for the people of Australia to donate at um, killim.info because um, they can't get away with this. The government can't get away with this. And if they do, or if they try to, or if they kill me, you'll know why. And I'm not afraid to die. I'm a spirit having a human experience, um, a light one at that, with a little devil on his shoulder sometimes. Um, but, you know, I'm pretty chipper. <coughs> this is my humble house. 
got some things here and I'll all things for my grandparents, my books, my dog, a bit of food. That's it. I'm squatting. It's Rich McLean. I'm hanging in there with the lines in my face. Yeah, I'm getting old. Um, I ask for your compassion, please. And I ask um, that you appreciate that I'm transforming the suffering and the experience and um, the pain and the detriment that I've suffered and turning it into less suffering for people who have been marginalised in my position as a person who is neurodiverse and has had sexual abuse and has had some terrible bad luck and that I'll be giving not only back to those people who um, support me, but um, back to all of the, um, the three charities, 60% of all the, all the, the sum determinations, without meaning you're wrong, by the way, government, um, to, um, to other places. Otherwise, I'll need the public support to take on this um, government myself. Otherwise, I'll have to do it from a street corner from my phone. I made millions upon millions of dollars. A conspiracy to divert the course of justice on this scale is unthinkable. And um, this victimization that was so systemic and long and oppressed and silent and done by proxy actually killed me. But I'm alive and um, no one has to admit fault. I don't want anyone to go to jail. I don't want to be framed. I just want a life free from oppression and I want to help people as I always have. It's Dr. Rich McLean. Please see, I constructed my destroyed website at um, kill him, uh, sorry, richmclean.com.au. You can have a look at that. If you, if you can't donate, maybe you'd like to buy some art, buy a card for your mum, if she's a good mum. And, um, and maybe you could um, check out killim.info and donate there and help me um, in the meantime sustain having the basic necessities of life met when the government has failed to do so. And, and that for a person who's so well known and I guess semi-famous but now infamous, but has been left to die with prejudice and stigma and oppression, um, that people will realise that um, you know, I'm a person of worth and everyone has worth. And um, I especially want to stand up for those marginalised people and then I'll be turning my suffering and my experience, which in a way have been gifts of teachings and learnings. Um, they say, the Buddhists say that enemies are the greatest teacher of patience. I think I've been patient long enough. And um, I'm going to turn this into a really good thing for Australia and the marginalised communities in the country. So please, um, government, if you can please atone this within one week from today, and also um, Australia, please listen to me. Check out the stuff I've done at richmclean.com.au and check out all the evidence. It's very distressing, a lot of it, but at killim.info, and you can help me there in the meantime. In the, in the, mean, in the meantime, it's Rich signing off. I've got, um, this is what I've got in the fridge. I've got some, some wheat big, some mouldy bread. I think I've got a couple of ciders, some olives, <laughs> a, um, some chicken for the dog. The chicken for the dog. The dog's going to survive. Crystal, come here. Come and say, can you say, oh, 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 sorry. Can you say, I love you. I love you. Crystal, I love you. I love you. Crystal, can you say, I love you. Oh, she's not going to say it. She usually does. <laughs> anyway, it's Rich McLean signing off. Please look after us. We're good people, me and Crystal. <laughs> and, um, we're, we're going to we're going to turn this around, and we're going to help everyone, and everyone's going to be exonerated, and everything's going to be good. Okay, let's all move on. Thanks. Can you say I love you? I love you, Crystal. Crystal, I love you. Crystal, can you say I love you? I love you. 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 Can you say? Please help Crystal and I, and we'll help the world. Thank you.